the content of your heart is what you produce on the outside. The way you dress today, the way you behave today is a result of what you've been seeing and what you've been hearing. It's not about trying to change, trying to be like so and so. It's about what you see because what you see will ultimately be seen manifesting on your outside. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. How are you? I hope you're well. I welcome you again to our show. This is Beholding Christ program. My name is Ben Fetcher and I'm excited about today because great things are happening because of the Word of God. As we get to know the Word of God, our lives are transformed and we are changed to the same image as Christ. And I want us to go to our key scripture of our Beholding Christ program, which is 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse number 18 and today i want to start from verse number 17 it says now the lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty so anytime you are in the place where the spirit of god is there is liberty because the spirit of god is the spirit of liberty it's the spirit of freedom liberty from sin liberty from the bondage of sin liberty from the bondage of condemnation liberty from the bondage of hell liberty from the bondage of sickness where the spirit of the lord is now verse 18 says all of us i'm reading from the message bible says all of us Nothing between us and God. Wow, nothing can start between us and God. Our faces shining with the brightness of his face. And so we are transfigured much like the Messiah. Our lives gradually becoming brighter and more beautiful as God enters our lives and we become like him. For understanding, let me read also from the King James says, But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are being transformed into, this, into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. He says that we behold him, we see him, and as we see him, because he is our identity because we are identified in him. We saw last time that he has become our righteousness. He has become our everything. It is in him that we find our, our meaning. It is in him we find our identity. And we saw that the whole Bible talks about him. It's not trying to, to define us. The Bible is not trying to define us, but it's showing us Christ. And now the New Testament comes and revealed, reveals to us Christ in his completeness, in his totality. So now as we see him, we see ourselves in him because just like when you put, uh, when you go and stand before a mirror, you don't see the image of a, pers on a, of a different person. You see your own image. You see yourself in the mirror. The moment you look at the mirror and see a donkey, you should run and run away because that mirror is mad. But when you look into a mirror, what you see is your very own image. Now the Bible says that the word of God is the mirror. And what does the mirror reflect? The mirror reflects us. So when we see Christ, because the Bible is about Christ, we see ourselves. He says, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord. So when we look into Christ, we see his glory and we are being uh, and are being transformed to the same image from glory to glory. So the way of transformation is not by trying or working hard to be changed. The way of transformation is by beholding. We change by looking. We change by seeing. Actually, even in the common world, they say man can see, man can do. You do what you do because of what you see. What you've been seeing all along is what you have become. What you started seeing when you were in primary school, when you got into secondary school, when you got into university, what you've been seeing all along that journey is what has produced who you are today. Because the, the issues of life flows from the heart. And the content of the heart is what de de determines what you become on the outside. And, how, and what gets into the heart comes through your eyes and your ears. So what you hear and what you see with your eyes is what becomes the content of your heart. And in abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Or in other words, the content of your heart is what you produce on the outside. The way you dress today, the way you behave today is a result of what you've been seeing and what you've been hearing. So if you want to behave well, it's not about trying to change, trying to be like so and so. It's about 
what you see because what you see will ultimately be seen manifesting on your outside praise be to god now he see he says that as we see him as we look unto him as we behold him we are transformed into the same image what does beholding mean beholding means to look him uh, to look unto him to see him to focus unto him and now this looking is not just it's not actually it's not with our optical eyes mm, i would like that to sink because it's not about what you see with your optical eyes actually the greatest hindrance to the flow of the things of God in our lives is our optical eyes. What we see with our natural eyes hinders us from seeing what is real in the physical or in the spiritual reality. Because the Bible says that everything we see in the physical or with our own eyes is temporal. But everything we don't see with the physical, but we see it in the spiritual. We, we, there are there's unseen realities. Those are eternal. For example, you cannot see righteousness. What you see are the effects of righteousness. When a man walks in righteousness, you will see the fruits of righteousness. But you cannot say this is what you call righteousness. But righteousness is eternal. It's just like even in the natural world, we have seen... Uh, like I can ask you a question, have you ever seen wind? I know most of you will tell me that you have seen wind, but I can tell you, you have never seen wind. What you see is the effects of wind. What you see is uh, uh, trees bending and uh, dust being blown away by the wind. But what you see is not the wind, it's the effects of the wind. So what you don't see is the real thing. Praise be to God. So now he says, when we see him with unveiled faces, when we see him with unveiled faces, we are transformed into the same image from glory to glory. Praise be to God. When you see him in his glory, you are transformed into that glory. And one way of uh, having, our, our, having ourselves to see him or to behold him is uh, what Paul says in Romans chapter 12 from verse 2 that do not be conformed to the patterns of this world. In other words, do not look like the way the things and the people of this world are. Don't behave like the people of this world. Don't do things like the people of this world because you have a higher calling. Brethren, you have a higher calling and your calling is Christ. So what he says is that instead of being uh, in, instead of being uh, uh, instead of looking like the the world being conformed that is the word instead of being conformed to the patterns of this world you need to be transformed and he gives us the how to be transformed he says it's by renewing of our minds so this the eyes of our minds are renewed we begin to see things differently you used to see yourself as a sinner but now when you see Christ as your righteousness you start seeing yourself as righteous and ultimately you start walking in righteousness so it does not begin with walking with the, in righteousness so that god can make you righteous it begins with god making you righteous and when you see yourself righteous you start walking in righteousness and you are transformed from glory to glory just as by the spirit of god praise be to god this is this is so wonderful so when we look into the world what we see is christ and when we see Christ, we see ourselves in him. When we see his wholeness, we see ourselves whole. So if you are suffering right now, you have a, a terrible sickness, or doctors have said that you, you, live, uh, you live under medication for the rest of your life. My friend, there is what the doctors say, there is what the natural circumstances say, there is what your body feels and what it says, but there is a higher truth there is a different story there is the voice of truth which speaks differently and the voice of, of truth is christ and he is your definition he is your identity the bible says as i keep repeating first john chapter 4 verse 17 as he is so are we in this world so if you are suffering if you are having diseases and sicknesses see christ as he is whole so are you so is christ sick if he is not sick Re uh, rebuke and refuse that sickness from your body. Command it to go because your identity is not in Adam who inherit, uh, who caused us to inherit pain and sicknesses, but your identity is in Christ in whom there is fullness of life. There is the fullness of God, the wholeness, the completeness, the totality of God is in 
Christ. Praise be to God. So because you are in Christ, what is supposed to reflect is the totality of God, the wholeness of God. And right now as I speak, I, do, I command that sickness to leave your body in the name of Jesus Christ. Because you are not supposed to be suffering from that sickness. It's of the devil. It's from the enemy. It's not of God. It's not from, from God's plan. God is not using it to teach you a lesson as many people think. God is not using sicknesses to teach people lessons because he has said that the Holy Spirit is our teacher. He teaches us by his spirit. So the more we see him as he is, we are transformed in the, into the same image and we start living like he wants us to live. Praise be to God. Now I want us to, to turn our Bibles in the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1. Something incredible. Something that is very, very, very important that is highlighted there. Uh, discussed there by Apostle Paul. In the book of first, in the book of Ephesians, chapter one, Ephesians chapter one, from verse seventeen. Let me start from verse fifteen. It says, therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. So Paul is given a chance to pray for the believers. God, uh, Paul is the apostle Paul, the great apostle. Sometimes I ask myself if it is. The current day is apostle who apostle is given a chance to pray for the church or to pray, to pray for you or to pray for the believers. What kind of a prayer would they make? Most of them would say, may God uh, give you cars, may God prosper you, may God give you a visa to go to the U.S., may God give you blah, 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 may God do this, may God increase your business, may God increase your, uh, bless your family, may God do these things for you, uh, may God open doors of opportunities, give you great jobs, increase your businesses. That is how the current apostles would pray. But something unique about Paul, when he was given a chance to pray for believers, this is what he's, he prayed. And I would like you to follow closely. It says, I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Number 17 says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know. Praise be to God. He says that uh, God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of all glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom. So what he asked God to give them was the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. When you get this, you got everything. Because when you get the spirit of wisdom, the spirit, uh, revelation, revelation, what is revelation? Revelation is having your eyes enlightened, having your eyes opened up to see as God sees. And that is what we call beholding or beholding Christ. This is what we call beholding Christ. When our eyes receive the revelation, when we receive the revelation of God, when we know who, what God has done for us, when we know what God is doing for us and what he did for us through the cross, that is uh, the greatest prayer that Paul prayed for the church and for the believers in Ephesus. And uh, I want us to go for a break. Then we'll be right after the break and we'll continue from there. I read, uh, we've read verse 17, but after the break, we'll take it up from there. Don't go far. Stay tuned. This is Beholding Christ. My name is Ben Fetcher and you are blessed. A marriage is a contract. The contract for ma of marriage is for a lifetime. You will never be hard to say mm -hmm. that a married, I married, I legally married a girl mm -hmm. that is nine, 10 years, 11, or even 15 and 16 mm -hmm. until, unless she attains the age of 18. Mm -hmm. That is when she can consent. Mm -hmm. Welcome back. This is Beholding Christ, and we were reading from Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. I want us to get up, get back there. It says uh, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Verse 18, very important. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance 
in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to ward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this age but also in that which is to come look at verse 18 he says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ Verse 18 says, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. The eyes of your understanding. When you talk about beholding Christ, we are talking about our eyes looking unto him. But how does that happen? Now, Paul explains it here. He says that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Let me read for you with the, key, with the amplified version. He says, the God of uh, verse 18, amplified version says, by having the eyes of your heart flooded with light so that you can know and understand the hope to which he has called you and how rich is his glorious inheritance in the saints. So when he talks about our eyes of understanding being enlightened, he is talking about our eyes being flooded with light. There is a light through which God wants us to see things. There is a light through which God has caused things to change. If you go back to the book of uh, Genesis, in the book of Genesis, the Bible says that God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was desolate and without form and darkness, and it was dark. And verse 4, Genesis chapter 1 says, And God said, Let there be light. Something interesting we see there is that God commanded there to be light without having created the sun and the moon and the stars. Because we see the sun and the moon and the stars were created later. So the source of light was not the sun, the moon and the stars. That makes you wonder. Well, he says, and God said, let there be light. Then Ephesians 1.18 says that the eyes of your heart may be flooded with light. This is a different kind of light. You know, the, what enables us to see is a light. If you are in a place full of darkness, you will stumble. You knock down things. You will walk like, you know, You'll walk and uh, you'll mess up everything when there is darkness. But in the, at the moment light is switched on, what happens is that you can see where you're going. You can see what is uh, the colors of the different colors of things. You can see where things are placed and you will not stumble when there is light. And now there is a light that God wants us to walk in. This light goes beyond the sun, the moon and the, the stars because this light existed before the moon, the sun, and the stars. We see this light. If, if you go to the book of John chapter 1, from uh, verse 1 downwards, you will see the apostle talking about that light. And he says that this word was the, was the light of man. This word was life. And this word was the light of man. Like I said earlier, the Old Testament is Christ concealed is Christ hidden the New Testament is Christ revealed Christ brought into understanding brought into revelation we can see him so in many instances you see in the Old Testament verses that talk about Christ but you cannot really tell that they are talking about Christ until now you come to the New Testament and you get Christ revealed so that now you can go back to the Old Testament and see him in the scriptures. Because we said that in our last, uh, the previous episodes, we said that the whole Bible talks about Christ. So if the whole Bible talks about Christ, but when you go to the book of Genesis, you don't see him mentioned. You go to the Exodus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, you go to all the books, the prophets, Samuel, uh, 
Malachi, you don't see him mentioned in Isaiah, you don't see his name mentioned, but they were pointing to him, all the prophets were pointing to him. The things that were happening in the Old Testament, they were pictures and symbols of Christ. They had one message, the coming of the Messiah, who is Christ, from the beginning. So, now, if you look at the book of Genesis chapter 1, it starts with the beginning, in the beginning, God. If you go to the book of John chapter 1, it also starts with, in the beginning, there was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Praise be to God. Genesis chapter 1, again, he talks about, he talks about the earth was formless, and God said, let there be light. John chapter 1, we come and see, he says that, and the Word was the light of men. It was the light of men. So the light that he was talking about in Genesis has now been revealed to us in the New Testament, and this light is Christ himself. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Christ himself. Now the Bible talks in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18 and it tells us that your eyes may be flooded with light. Ah, and now you, you can, I, I believe now you can see what I'm talking about. That this light, this flood light is not just any other light but Christ. So that your eyes, that the eyes of your heart be flooded with Christ. Christ is the light through which we see things as God sees them. Praise be to God. Christ is the light through which we, we receive our healing. Christ is the light through which we see life as it is. Christ is the light through which we see redemption as it is. Christ is the light through which we see righteousness as it is. And he says that our eyes will be flooded with light. Praise be to God. The kind of light that you are under determines how you see things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is why mostly those people who, uh, who, who are in shops, they sell shoes. If you go at night, you'll see those shoes and those clothes in different colors because of the different kinds of lights that is lighting up the place. Sometimes you may be cheated and you buy something thinking it is purple only to come home and realize it was black. Why? Because of the color that was, uh, the, the color that was, uh, the, because of the light that was lighting that place. Praise be to God. So there is a kind of light that men live, depending on the light that is flooding them, depending on the, the source of light that they are having. But now the, the God kind of life can only be experienced when we are, uh, when we are lightened by Christ himself because he is the light that is beyond the sun. He is the light that is beyond all physical things. He is the light beyond all science. He is the light beyond all doctors' stories and reports. He is the light beyond all the economies. He is the light beyond and above all the nations, all the powers of this world, all the philosophies of this world, all the definitions, all the studies, all the the knowledge of this world. He is that light that is beyond all that. So if my life has to be aligned to the word of God, if my I have to experience the healness, uh, the wholeness of God, the healing of God, if I have to experience the salvation of God, if I have to experience the prosperity that is of God, if I have to experience the good things that are of God, the only place to have them is when I am flooded with the light which is Christ. Praise be to God. And mostly you realize even the Old Testament, though it was in pictures, it was in symbols, what was happening is that uh, uh, when men needed solutions, God opened their eyes. God flooded their eyes with his different kind of light. A good example is in the story of Abraham and uh, the, the maid who was called Hagar. The Bible talks about Hagar and says that when they were in the wilderness and they didn't, uh, and uh, they were thirsty, the water they had, had run over, had run off. And the Bible says that Hagar cried and the baby cried. And what happened is this, God did not create a well for Hagar, but he did what? He opened her eyes. And when her eyes were opened, Hagar saw the well that was already there in place. Most of the things that we are looking for, we want God to create them, but God is not creating other things 
Why? Because all that you'll ever need for life and godliness, first, a second Peter chapter one verse two, all you'll ever need for life and godliness, it is in Christ Jesus. When your eyes are flooded with the light of Christ, you see the well, you see the water, you see the solution for your problems, you see your healing, you see your wholeness, you see your righteousness. So when her eyes were opened, she saw the well. So it's not like God came and dug a well at that moment, no. God did not dig a well or create a well. The well was there, but she could not see it because her eyes were blinded. But when he beheld Christ, when he got the revelation, when God opened her eyes, she saw the source of her provision. Praise be to God. Another guy is Gehazi in the story of uh, Elisha. The Bible says that one morning Elisha, uh, Gehazi woke up and uh, he went outside and he saw a great army from the enemy's camp. And he was, uh, he was worried that now we are finished. Actually, he went back to, the, to, his, uh, to his master, that is Elisha, and he told Elisha, man, we are killed, we are finished, we are going to die. I don't know what we are going to do. But Elisha didn't pray that God will send an army from heaven. No, 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 no. God, uh, Elisha prayed that God would open the eyes of Gehazi. And when his eyes were opened, he saw that the, the army that was on their side was greater than the enemy and was greater than the, the armies that were on the enemy's side. Praise be to God. The enemy that you think is so great in your life, the sickness that you, you think is so great in your life, the tribulation, the situation that you think they are too huge for you, let me tell you, the thing that is needed for you is God to flood you with his light, his kind of light, which is Christ. And when you are flooded with this light, you see things as God sees them. Because Christ is your definition. Christ is your identity. You see yourself as he is. So you don't see yourself in that sickness. That is why uh, God says, let the weak say, I am strong. So how can a weak person say they are strong unless they are flooded with the light, the, the real light, which is Christ? Because when they see Christ, they see him as their strength. Though they are weak on the outside, they can say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. How can the poor say, I am rich, unless they are flooded with the light, which is Christ, who became poor, that they may become rich. Praise be to God. How can the sick say, I am healed, unless they see Christ, who took away their sins, who was wounded for their transgressions, who was wounded for their, who was bruised for their healing. Unless they see him, they cannot say, I am healed. But when they see uh, their eyes are flooded with the light of Christ and they see him as his perfection, as, as their perfection, as their wholeness. They see and walk in wholeness. Why? Because their eyes are flooded with the real light, which is Christ Jesus. Praise be to God. So even today, what is this? Uh, even today, what is needed of you is not you to try to become these and these, to try to become like so and so in the Bible. But what is needed for us is what Paul prayed for the church. This is the greatest prayer he prayed. He didn't pray for their prosperity because he knew their prosperity is in Christ. He didn't pray for their healing. He knew their healing is in Christ. He didn't pray for, the, for them to become righteous. He knew their righteousness is in Christ. He didn't pray for them to become holy or to walk in holiness. He knew their holiness in, is in Christ. He didn't pray for them to get things. He knew everything is found in Christ. And when their eyes are flooded with the light of Christ, they will see themselves as Christ and as God sees them. And the enemy will not have an upper hand against them. The enemy will not take advantage of them again. Praise be to God. I know you are blessed and keep beholding Christ. Keep seeing Christ in your life. Stop murmuring and complaining about things that you see happening in your life, in your business, in your family, in your health. Stop murmuring about them. Stop complaining about them. Choose to see Christ who is the real light. And when your life is flooded with this light, you will never Never, never be the same again. So God bless you. You are, an, um, you are amazing people. You are a wonderful person. God loves you so much. That is why he has sent Christ and he has sent me with this message. Father, we thank you for your word today. Thank you that as Christ is, so are we in this world. How we pray that you continually by your word enlighten our eyes, flood our eyes with the light which is Christ, that we may see things as we are seen by God and by Christ. 
Christ. We thank you and we worship you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Goodbye. See you in our next episode. My name is Ben Fetcher. This is Beholding Christ. Thank you. God bless you.